Hello, everybody. My name is Alexandra Huidu, and I am here with you today with uh, the director of Lumen World Congress 2021, Professor PhD Antonio Sandu, and also my colleague, PhD Anna Frunza. Uh, I am an editor within Lumen Publishing House, and us as organizers of the Congress thought it would be appropriate to um, have this masterclass and uh, questions and answers session in order to uh, speak about a subject that we as, um, as a publishing house, as a research center, as a conference center, have uh, frequently spoke of in numerous occasions, because it is, uh, it is an issue which is very important to us. We want to promote these ideas. We want to create awareness within the academic community regarding the ethics of publication, the ethics of research, and why we need it. Uh, actually, the big question today is if anybody actually cares about publication ethics and research ethics, mainly about publication ethics, which is the main topic of today's uh, Q&A and masterclass. And um, if you look at our activity along the 20 years that uh, we left behind, uh, we left uh, a trail like uh, crumb breads uh, or breadcrumbs, I'm sorry. Uh, we left a trail of um, publications, of workshops, of conferences dedicated specifically to this issue, because it is uh, it is one it is part of our mission, uh, not only as a publishing house but uh, as a center for uh, bringing together uh, researchers and the academic community to uh, promote healthy and valuable ideas within this community. And we believe that publishing houses are responsible for promoting such ideas and we take it on as a mission and we have been doing this for uh, 20 years now. Therefore, um, Professor PhD Antonio Sandu is uh, well known in the field of ethics and also of publication ethics through the papers he has published and uh, the numerous lectures he has given on the topic. Um, he, of course, you can read his articles, you can see the way he has been trying for years to explain uh, research methodology, uh, the correct appliance of research methodology in various fields of uh, social and humanistic sciences. Also, uh, my uh, colleague Anna Frunza is a well-known ethicist in her field. And uh, they have been uh, a team already before I, uh, I joined them. Uh, a few years ago, and um, I have joined them uh, by adhering to this, uh, to this idea that we are here not only to publish, but also to publish as it should be published. So, um, Antonio, I, I would like this, and I know you would also like it, to be um, uh, an open-minded talk, and uh, a talk that maybe, maybe, will make people wonder if we are not um, too quick to touch issues that might hurt. But uh, if we don't uh, touch particular issues and if we uh, drag dirt under the rug, so to say, uh, then uh, there will be no cleaning after. Therefore, um, Tell us a few ideas about how you see ethics and how you see ethics in publication. And if you honestly believe after so many years of, ex of experience that people care about ethics, honest opinion, Antonio Sandu. Thank, uh, thank you very much for your introduction. And I thank all of you for being uh, here with us again and again and again at uh, the Lumen workshop conferences congresses and so on uh, and that's because we care we care about what uh, we do what we produce scientifically or culturally and what we publish of course um, and uh, I will start by uh, showing to you the few publication ethics and ethics in research practice and uh, innovation it's a publication uh, coordinated by uh, uh, me, Anna Frunze, and Elena Unguru. Uh, Alexandra, who is also, uh, is also uh, 
author in this uh, book and uh, others uh, important ethicists uh, around the world. This, public, uh, his, uh, this publication was uh, published in IGI Global uh, from the United States, so uh, could be uh, of interest for English uh, readers in uh, ethics and uh, in uh, research. And uh, another book in Romanian this time, Ethics and Integrity in Education and Research, Etica și Integritate în Educație și Cercetare, apărut în țară data aceasta la editura Tritonic din București, uh, volum pe care am avut privilegiul să-l coordonez alături de profesorul Bogdan Popoveniuc de la Universitatea Ștefan cel Mare din uh, Suceava și de asemenea uh, un volum pe care l-am publicat împreună colega, colegile mea Frunză și Alexandra Huidu, Percepția socială asupra valorilor etice în regiunea de nord-est a României. Acest volum răspunde cumva întrebării Alexandrei. Sunt în this volume uh, answer in somehow, sorry for I'm speaking in Romanian, uh, answer somehow to the questions of Alexandra. Did the people care about ethics? Uh, I'm sorry for the poor machine uh, accompaniment here uh, in my uh, home. Uh, and uh, of course, people care about ethics. It's uh, important for all of us to, to feel good inside. But I'm an ethic person, not an ethicist, an ethic person. I do what's right. So if I do what's right, of course, I care to be ethics. And then why uh, people are not, and sometimes, because they do not understand. Uh, most of the time we do not understand why. Why we publish? If we can answer why we publish our paper, or our research, then it will be naturally to respect ethics of, uh, of publication. But uh, I read today an article, interesting article on contributors.lo, a Romanian site on different topics, on opinion. It was a paper um, on ethics about uh, Constantin uh, Crenganu, uh, the author is Constantin Crenganu, about uh, cargo cult, uh, cargo cult um, Western oil and uh, cl climatic uh, changing. And of course, it's about uh, honesty and integrity in science. Uh, the article make a very interesting difference between what is honesty, what, what is integrity. Well, most of us want to be honest. Honest being, well, I uh, do not lie. Because in this Old Testament say do not lie. And in all culture we have do not lie. Well, sometimes we do lie, sometimes we do cheat, but most of the, uh, the people like to be honest. Why? Because we are, we, it is part of our education, so that's uh, seven years uh, on home, home education and so on. And uh, we are honest, so that means I do not lie if I go to the Blumen Congress and do not present my paper. I do not lie. Because I don't say anything, so I don't lie. But I do not have a, a real presentation to talk, uh, to talk. And I cannot invent something, because I, that means I lie. So I do not lie, I'm honest, but not an integral, because I also want uh, this point that uh, university give to me, and discredit. Uh, so we, most of us publish because we need the academic credits. That's uh, points. So uh, at the, our publishing house and our conference center, sometimes we uh, receive information, is this publication ISIS? ISIS um, was a terrorist group uh, or a goddess in, in Egypt. We prefer to think about goddess. Uh, ICI is, um, was an uh, institute uh, that uh, measure uh, the result of science. Now, uh, nowadays, we know 
this institute of um, Thomson Reuters and then Clarivate Analytics and they published uh, this famous um, index and uh, uh, databases, uh, uh, Clarivate Analytics. And uh, yes, some of our publication is mentioned there. And uh, well, there is the publication there, so it's worth to publish and it's good because if the publication has amount of value from their authors, from their uh, publishing house and their um, group of uh, reviewers and so on, the publication will make steps and uh, in a while will be recognized by other institutes. So it's important to publish in uh, well-established journals. So this, uh, and Andra will talk about uh, a little longer on this topic, so I will not uh, interfere too much with her presentation. Uh, but um, that's a problem. When we publish only for point for academic credit, we can cheat. We do not lie eventually. But we cheat. We have garbage science. Uh, in the paper I mentioned, they say, well, it's not a lie, but not honest too. It's not integrity. When we, uh, for example, we do not tell everything, all the results, or I say, not fabricate results, but uh, invent authors, give authorship. And uh, Anna will uh, uh, tell us something about what is give authorship and why and uh, tell, uh, tell us some, uh, uh, some cases, some case studies on uh, our Lumen Publishing House uh, experiences on this. And, um, well, there is many reasons for why we invite a person to join us in, uh, in uh, authorship. And I uh, read daily this kind of uh, advertisement in, in a group of uh, editors and of researchers that they, well, uh, a third or third or the second or third or fourth author is uh, required for an article. But if this author is required to uh, make better research or better publication, that's great. But when we add this new author uh, after, for example, after the publication is accepted by the journal and this, there has no co contribution at all. What is an author? What is a contributor? What's the difference? So Anna also will uh, tell us something about this and uh, why are we are not honest. Because uh, sometimes uh, important name in science, it's... Uh, to be co-author with us, then uh, create uh, a good uh, um, image of the paper and maybe a good number of quotations because again, academic credits, quotation give us academic credits, but quotations and a good uh, reputation of the, uh, of the authors, uh, of the great authors, older authors could increase uh, uh, younger authors, the chance to, to be recognized. So it's legitimate un until one point. What's, wh what about pub uh, publish with your own uh, research director or thesis coordinator? Again, uh, Alexandra or Anna will uh, take about this. So uh, uh, it's not um, about do not plagiarize because in Romania and all, all wide, all over the world, uh, plagiarize is uh, recognized as ethic problem, ethic issue. But it's more penal, more uh, to be blamed and sometimes as communicating from scientific community and so on. What about the other 
and honesty. What about when we give up of one author, but uh, uh, keep uh, their contribution to the paper? Is, is this plagiarized? His, own, his contribution, when we uh, give up of his, uh, his uh, paper? So, uh, uh, Andra, we can uh, continue this uh, conversation. Thank you very much, Antonio, for these remarks, because they open up the discussion uh, poo, very much, a large topic. Uh, let's just hope we, we have the time to um, touch all the key points. Uh, before uh, you've made a, a preview, some kind of a teaser for the people who are listening, but before um, I go to my part of the presentation, I think that uh, it would be maybe best for Anna to tell us a few things about um, what authorship is, what goth authorship is. I know that she has, uh, she has prepared some explanations because this is also a masterclass and we are also taking questions. So please write to us on Facebook or uh, in the chat uh, for the participants who are here with us. Um, because I think we, we need to establish the, the basics first and uh, let's just explain one more time uh, to make it clear for everybody uh, what authorship is, what co-authorship is, what uh, we mean by a contributor to a research who is not an author, what ghost authorship is, what gift authorship is, because sometimes uh, we know from experience as editors that people make unintentional mistakes. And it is always the same question for us. Uh, do we punish uh, in our terms? Do we reject from publication? Do we make an ethical fuss out of such a situation when somebody uh, actually uh, breaks ethical rules because they are not informed and they do not actually know what the difference between this, uh, these concepts uh, is. So please, Anna. Thank you, Alexandra. Me. Thank you, Antonio, for um, um, your both introductions. Um, I must admit those were both helpful because um, discussing about this, this subject uh, requires uh, some references, references that we actually find in the literature because we are scientists, because we uh, are interested in uh, developing our knowledge about the subject we are uh, researching. We always go to the international national literature, right? So as Antonio introduced the aspects of um, ethical uh, behavior in uh, scientific writing, uh, by quoting some uh, some uh, article that he read, I will start by um, citing the international guidelines that actually help researchers to follow the, their path. And uh, I'm referring to the International Committee of Ethical Journal Editors, that is one of the biggest um, uh, international committee that actually uh, help researchers um, being aware of their ethical implication, of the, their research uh, ethical implication. And uh, as we all know, for ethical compliance and scientific rigor, international forums are set in motion and bring guidance, evaluation tools, new approaches, and uh, a continuous invitation to debate among specialists in the scientific publishing world. She, and uh, as I told you before, the International Scientific of Medical Journals Editors, also known as the um, Vancouver Group, is one of these um, um, committees. And another scientific contribution, significant contributor um, to meeting current ethical um, standards and international utility is the Committee on Publication Ethics, COPE, as it uh, is the shortcut. This COPE, is one uh, committee in which actually Lumen Publishing House is member uh, through its scientific publication, through its scientific journals. And uh, my colleagues previously um, uh, introduced the, the need to make a difference between authorship and uh, contributor and gift authorship and ghost authorship. The simplest, uh, let's say, definition between uh, an author and a contributor is 
like that. The author of a work is the person who has been involved in all aspects of the creation of the work, including research, design, analysis, and final presentation of the work. While a contributor is a person who may have provided purely technical help or writing assistance. And to come to go further, um, the association I um, previously cited, actually the International Committee on uh, Medical Journal Editors, recommends that authorship be based on the following four uh, criteria. And I'm sa saying four criteria because, um, as at an international level was established, uh, these cr criteria must be met all together. And um, the first one is substantial contributions to the conception or design of the work or the acquisition, analysis, or interpretation of data of the work. The second one is drafting the work or revising it critically for important intellectual content. The third condition is final approval of the version to be published. And the fourth, agreement to be accountable for all aspects of the work in ensuring that questions related to the accuracy or integrity of any part of the work are appropriately investigated and resolved. Well, so far so good. We know what an authorship is, what happens when authors, they consider uh, being part of the authorship are um, misleading the editors, because we are talking about publishing research, uh, research results by disseminating uh, these results in scientific publication. And all researchers want to, uh, for their papers to be published. So they came to editors. And we are such editors. And how researchers are misleading the editors and get involved in, as Antonio said previously, dishonest practices. Um, to their uh, research or uh, research results and further to research dissemination. And one situation is by putting down names of people who took little or no part in research, which means gift authorship. Gift authors are people who are listed as authors, but uh, who did not much a significant contribution to the research. And there are um, uh, therefore do not fulfill uh, the international criteria. These are often senior figures um, like head of departments or um, coordinators in PhD um, projects or um, prof full professors in relation with uh, students or coordinated to students. Uh, their names are added to curry favor or because it's just the way it is. Uh, within um, the university or uh, within this the um, uh, academic uh, community they belong. Another type of gift author is a colleague whose name is added um, on, the, on the understanding that uh, she or he will do the same for you, regardless, regardless the contribution to the research, but simply to swell the publication list. This is one of the less desired aspect, like um, I have no contribution to the paper, but my name is listed because at my, in my turn, I will help another author to, to enlarge his publication list and I will put his name in my work. Um, I have some cases for each of this situation, but um, I will come back to the cases because I need to, to introduce you uh, what the ghost authorship means. Um, and here intervenes uh, another behavior that researchers um, often uh, do, leaving out names of people who did um, actually did take part uh, in research. And the ghost authorships uh, are those authorships that um, usually contains two situations. Uh, one situation refers to professional writers who are actually employed by commercial sponsors whose role is never acknowledged. They simply uh, write the paper based on the uh, data they received. Um, although such writers rarely meet the international criteria, so they will never um, be considered as authors, 
because they just um, do the technical thing. And as I previously said, uh, previously said, the the whole the all four criteria must be met. Um, another situation in, in which we can speak about uh, ghost authorship is um, when we use this term to describe people uh, who actually make a significant contribution to a research project and fulfill the authorship criteria, but they are not listed as authors. And in this situation, the international guidelines clearly condemn the practice and state that all persons designed as authors should qualify for authorship and those who qualify should be listed. These are the differences uh, between author, um, gift authorship, uh, ghost authorship, and contributor. For um, the situation of gift authorship, gift authorship um, and ghost authorship, I also have two cases, but uh, Andra, I would like for you to tell me if I continue with the cases or if you are, are you going to present your um, speech and I will come, uh, come back to those. Oh, um, I would uh, first ask the participants in this Q&A if they have questions or if they have cases that uh, might want to bring to discussion during this, uh, this Q&A. Well, if questions do come to mind, please write them down in, uh, in the chat box below and we will make sure to answer to you. Uh, also, if questions do come to mind after, um, after the end of this masterclass, of course, you have uh, uh, the opportunity during all five days of the Congress to meet us in the virtual desk and virtual open space. And um, I will take on from Anna right now because uh, I was thinking uh, it, it is what I wanted to say before this masterclass started. And on the other hand, it's not quite what I wanted to speak about. But I, I heard her talk about um, the fact that um, some people create academic gifts for other people because they want to be uh, recognized as authors um, in connection to the people they are making the gift to. And um, that uh, made me wonder if um, somehow there is no balance and somewhere maybe in the ethical, in the whole ethical system, maybe we have some cracks. And uh, let me tell you what I'm thinking about. Um, I honestly don't believe that, uh, or let's say like that, I've heard a lot of times being said that the reason why unethical behavior is a problem um, is somehow given by the fact that in order to promote academically, universities require some scientometric indicators to be um, met. And that these indicators mean that you need to publish in uh, well-known or not well-known, well-indexed journals. You have to attend conferences and therefore you receive academic credits. On the other hand, if we are to uh, change the perspective 180 degrees, we are to ask ourselves how else can a university, which is not only an educational center, but also a research center, um, develop criteria in order to evaluate its staff members in the academia, I mean. Of course, we know there are also other criteria that are taken into consideration, like the evaluation made by students or by other colleagues, but this is an important uh, criteria that needs to be met and should be met by any researcher in order to promote. So from this point of view, having these criteria is, is not an incentive not to be ethical. The problem arises when people hunt, uh, begin a hunt to, um, 
to meet these criteria and forget why they're doing it. And during this hunt, we see that they lose touch of what Antonio said uh, at the beginning of this uh, lecture. Why do I publish? Do I publish because I want to have a good stable job in a university? And let's admit it, universities give stable jobs. Because I want to have a bigger salary, because if I am a, a professor, uh, I get better pay than an associate professor. Therefore, I want to lead a good life and I want to promote. Or as a researcher, I actually have something that I want to say. So therefore, the system does promote scientific, scientometric criteria, metrics. It is this metrical system that actually turns things around, but this is not bad per se. What is bad is that there is no connection between what ethical commissions, committees look for in universities and their attributions and what we do as, uh, as an activity as publishers. What I mean is just to give you an example, if someone comes to me as a publisher and wants to publish a paper, and after publication, let's say we discover that it was a case of ghost authorship. The next step is to retract that paper from publication. Okay, we make a retraction. Databases are uh, acknowledged uh, about the fact that the publication was retracted. At the same time, what that person does, the authors who had that ethical issue, who were guilty of not respecting ethical standards, what they do is they just delete that paper from their uh, papers list. In the university, when they go back in academia at their workplace, actually, there is no continuance of this, of what I do as a publisher. I do retract the article, but in the academia, there are no more measures taken in order to ensure that those people, those researchers who had that problem no longer do the same and the same all over again. And Alexander, so this, this is this a crack be... that I see in the system. I, Therefore, I... I, I uh, and Alexander, I shall uh, interrupt you. In uh, the very uh, uh, heavy cases, uh, such as plagiarize and uh, so on, yes, academia take uh, measures. Uh, sometimes... Uh, uh, they uh, with, uh, withdraw the uh, title of doc uh, doctors, PhD titles, or um, uh, the academic title that was uh, obtained uh, by uh, using this uh, retracted uh, article. Uh, uh, not for everything, not for every articles or uh, books. Uh, uh, just uh, for, the, for those that uh, are involved in PhDs, uh, obtaining uh, in uh, criteria as a, a limit. When uh, you say, uh, I became professor, but I cheat in, uh, in the list. So if uh, the, uh, the condition are fulfilled without the, those paper, there was no kind, uh, consequences. But if uh, this was uh, important article. Sometimes, sometimes there are consequences, and depends from university to university. Not in every situation is uh, like this. And there is another practice between uh, uh, in the relationship between uh, editors, scientific pub uh, publishing houses, and uh, universities, because we know that our uh, part of our uh, authors are affiliated to scientific uh, institution. And here comes the action of the publishing house committee, ethical committee. When a situation is identified, such as uh, self-plagiarism or um, the uh, possible duplicate content, uh, the mission, actually the role of a ethical committee uh, within a publishing house is to communicate with uh, the universities, the research institution of affiliation, right? Yes, but there is a problem here also. Uh, most 
that the publishing house does not have an ethical committee. And uh, the publishing house relies on the ethical committee on the universities on the, uh, or scientific uh, uh, research uh, institutes uh, where uh, uh, our authors are affiliated and uh, does not uh, organize their own uh, ethical committee. It's uh, rare in the academic world that a publishing house really has an ethical committee. So this uh, should be um, states uh, to uh, more publishing house develop such uh, kind of ethical uh, committee could be important uh, step uh, forward uh, in developing the publication ethics. Uh, some uh, some publishing houses are members of COPE and uh, they do have uh, ethical preoccupation, ethical concerns, and sometimes they do organize their own um, uh, ethical committee, but uh, mostly when uh, the publishing house belongs to a research institution or university, institution or university. If the publishing house uh, belongs to a university, of course they have a committee, an ethical committee, an ethical research committee, or an ethical or academical ethic committee. But is if uh, the publishing house is uh, autonomous from uh, uh, research institutes or universities, mostly they do not have such uh, such ethic uh, committee. Sorry for interruption, uh, Alexandra. Could continue your uh, your speech. Well, I don't uh, think we have much time to continue because we only have three minutes left of this workshop. Therefore, if anybody has any questions. If not, please, um, a word for uh, a word of finish from Professor Antonio Sandu and from my colleague Anna Fronza. Please, Antonio. Well, uh, my hope is uh, Ethic, uh, ethics uh, became uh, an important uh, uh, topic in uh, academia, not because uh, this, uh, this uh, freight of falsified results or plagiarism, and because the uh, public does not have any more trust in science. And that's the most important problem but, uh, mostly in these uh, years of uh, crisis, people, you see, do not have uh, trust in science. Do uh, Shall I vaccinate or not? Shall I respect the rules or not? Is the science community trustable for people? And if ethics is not uh, perceived as important in the academic community, public will not give up money for, or not only money, but let's say money for research. Because it, why, why trust them? Because they plagiarize one another, they do uh, all kinds of uh, mistakes and uh, uh, falsified results or have an un honest uh, behavior, do not uh, uh, told us what uh, are the results that we that do not support the hypothesis? It's not a ethical mistakes, and public does not have trust in science. And if do not have trust in science, the all humanity could go back to middle age, and it is not good for for humanity. It, the ethics in science is important because of trust, not because only of, because of trust of uh, of uh, academic community and uh, through uh, progress in science, but also from the public trust in uh, science itself and in modern science and in modern technology. Otherwise, it's a problem of uh, why we uh, go beyond in this uh, technological evolution. What are the problems? I, in a previous session, I asked to distinguish professors the questions. This, uh, evolution of science and technology could be could it be stopped will it be stopped is it good to be stopped or is it bad so if people does not trust in science sometimes the evolution 
will stop because trust in science means trust in ethics that is involved in research, that is involved mostly in bioethics, in medical research, and in technology, in communication technology, and so on. Anna? Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, the possibility of uh, of discussing this kind of uh, subject in here. Uh, while I was uh, describing the ethical cases, I was um, I was faced as an editor within Lumen Publishing House. I um, I was wondering if uh, not exactly the lack of communication starts the possible ethical misconduct, and that's why I introduce the possibility of a better communication between uh, publishing houses, research institutes, uh, uh, journal editors, um, all these instances that actually uh, work together for, uh, in order to, to publish relative uh, authentic research results. And, and, don't, uh, and don't forget the financiers of the research. It's important. Okay. Those are the most important. <laughs> okay. uh, and I, I consider that uh, this is a field um, where questions never stop and dilemmas never stop. And I am sure that many of us, many researchers are more and more interested in, in understanding this uh, octopus, let's say, because uh, what implies ethics also all, all, always will imply um, difficulties in understanding and communication. And this is what I, um, I wanted to, to bring into the end of this session. Thank you for, um, thank you for your uh, participation and thank you for inviting me in this session. Thank you very much, PhD Anna Funza. We are happy to have you all in World Women Congress. Please feel free to join our um, open uh, space and uh, give us your questions, your ideas, and your thoughts. And we await you at 1700 hours book rest time for a special lecture, How Does a Client Experience Philosophical Consultation, held by Jorge Humberto Diaz and Tiago Pita from Lisbon, Portugal. See you next time. See you at the next lecture at 1700 hours. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Thank you.